To the US now, and there are reports Joe Biden's administration is set to loosen rules around America's transition to electric vehicles. The Environmental Protection Agency is proposing less stringent requirements be implemented for vehicle pollution in the short term. So this would allow car manufacturers to produce a smaller number of EVs by 2030. The White House had originally projected EVs to make up two thirds of vehicles by 2032. Let's bring in Matt Canavan. Chris Bowen's going to love hearing this, Matt. Well, this just blows up the, uh, the government's uh, plans for a new carbon tax on cars, these new efficiency standards. They've exclusively argued that this will be OK because the US has the same system. Their arguments were already wrong because they're proposing a 60% cut in emission limits when the US in the last five years has only reduced emission limits by 25%. In, in to, on top of that, the fine that Chris Bowen is proposing is three times higher than has existed in the US. But now there's completely no justification because while the US did have future plans that look similar to Australia's, they don't anymore. The, the Biden administration is completely backing down uh, from that. And that comes after US manufacturers had been uh, uh, ringing the bell on how much mm. this was going to cost, how much it was going to flow through to, to US consumers. The same thing is happening here. The uh, our car manufacturers released modelling over the weekend that shows the most popular car in Australia would go up by $10,000 uh, if this uh, government persists with this plan. The government should drop this plan. There's no uh, international uh, comparison for it. Uh, and why? Why would you make Australians pay more for their cars when yeah. they're already paying too much for well, energy, just, for food and so many Just other on the international comparison, though, I mean, their argument would be that, that most advanced economies are moving towards efficiency standards. But the point, of course, is it's how, how stringent those standards are and how, how much the penalty is for breaching those standards. Simply saying that other countries have uh, a form of a tax or, or a certain regulation tells you nothing about the specific details of the regulation mm. or tax that you're imposing on this country. And as yeah. I say, and as I've outlined, the government doesn't seem to be able to do this and compare this properly. Well, uh, what they're proposing to do in Australia is more than double what has occurred in the US over a similar the, time frame. Yeah, uh, and, and, of course, that might mean, probably will mean, it'll have a much bigger impact. Well, the interesting thing about the American comparison, too, is that its infrastructure is, is far more advanced than ours here, and they're already hitting the brakes on it. Well, exactly. That's true, too. Obviously, we don't have uh, the charging infrastructure available around the country, especially in regional areas uh, where I am. Um, but look, like, like the US, the reason the US is watering this down would be similar reasons to ourselves, mm. uh, that many of the vehicles that the government wants to make more expensive uh, are, not, are, simply, are simply a necessity uh, for tradesmen and women. Uh, tradies can't uh, go to an EV ute anytime soon. That is not practical for someone that has to keep on the go uh, all the time. I might have to be called out late at night. Uh, you need the, an internal combustion engine car that can be always on. Uh, and so why would the government impose these extra costs on people trying to earn a living? It doesn't make any okay. sense. Uh, so, look, I think the government has to go back to the drawing board here, scrap their current plans. And, look, I, I've never been against a certain level of emission limits here, create more efficiencies over time. But, again, it comes down, the devil's in the detail here, that, that people are going to pay more than's necessary if if the government doesn't get this right. OK. Uh, I've just got to ask you before we go, Per and Davey, Barnaby Joyce in the headlines uh, for boozing out of Canberra uh, in recent times. Matt, uh, do the Nats need to, to lay off the ink? Look, it's not something I've noticed over the years, uh, honestly, Peter. It's, uh, I mean, I don't tend to go out all that much, but I just don't see it. Uh, obviously, when it rains, it pours, and there's been a couple of these unfortunate incidents. Uh, both of these uh, people have explained that. Uh, I'm sure they'll learn from these lessons. I don't think there's much more in it than that. Mm. And I certainly think there are much more important issues to discuss uh, for the Australian people. Sure, I get it. But, I mean, you know, it's in the headlines at the moment. I mean, is, are there any discussions being had about, <laughs> you know, having your, your, your respective Absolutely meetings not. in Canberra about, you know, I mean, having it alcohol-free, for instance? Oh, OK. Well, look, I, no, I haven't been involved... Any discussions uh, about that? I mean, look, we're all adults. We're all responsible adults. You can take responsibility for your own actions. Uh, it's, okay. uh, it feels enough like a boarding school as it is down there because you're locked in and you have to respond to bells 
Uh, I, I don't think uh, we need uh, those Alrighty. kind of, of rules. People have to be responsible for their own actions. Matt Canavan, good to have you with us as always.